Yesterday, President Biden signed an executive order pertaining to AI regulations. And frankly, I think the timing of this executive order is great, you know, it being before Halloween, because I can't think of anything scarier than the seniors who run this country, who are baffled by things like Outlook email, Facebook, and apps on their phone, writing the rules for how we are able to use what is arguably the greatest technology to come out since the internet and smartphones. But remember the guys, these rules are for your safety. They're for your safety and mine. It's totally not about reserving access to unfiltered, unmoderated AI to the elites and then letting the public use these neutered toys that have a digital ID tied to every instance and everything that's generated so that if you do manage to use the neutered AI to generate something naughty, the government can track you down and punish you. No, that would be ridiculous. That's not what all this is about. Uh, but anyway, they also launched this new government website, AI.gov, so that us peasants can have a nice official website to go to where we can see everything that's being done, everything that Biden and friends is doing to protect us from the evil robots. I mean, just look at this picture. Big Joe is the only person standing between us and Judgment Day. He's like a rocky cliff that is standing defiantly against the tides of the ocean. That's right. You don't get that kind of stoicism with AI-generated images. Now, next to Stoic Biden, you see we've got this message about making AI work for the American people, join the National AI Talent Surge. So if we click this Apply Now link, it brings us uh, to the application page of AI.gov where we have some information about what the government is looking for in an AI expert. And we also have a link right here to view some open roles. And ladies and gentlemen, this is where the memes start. I mean, if you thought that some of the positions that you've seen on LinkedIn offering these really paltry salaries for senior dev positions with 10 plus years of experience were bad, Wait until you see some government job listings that actually have hard salary caps. I mean, this one here that's offering $20,000, I'm pretty sure that's less than you would make working full time at the drive through of literally any fast food place. And granted, things do start getting a little bit better when we scroll down. I mean, there's a whole bunch of 100,000 plus jobs here. Uh, but this here, 155,700 is actually the highest that you're going to see uh, on these four pages. You know, that's salary caps for you or government salary caps. And, um, you know, this that we're seeing, this 155K is for supervisory operations research analyst, which I'm pretty sure this 155K salary would be peanuts for this position in the private sector. I mean, imagine if you were a supervisor at Microsoft or Google or hell, even OpenAI, one of these companies that came out of nowhere and is now worth $80 billion. If you're a supervisor on the AI team of any of those companies, I'd expect your compensation to be pushing a million dollars a year. But the government can't do that. There's limits to how much federal employees can be paid, which I honestly think is a good thing because it prevents the president from paying himself a trillion dollars. Uh, but you know, if you were like an ATF agent or some DMV employee with the IQ of a peanut, then having a salary cap of $183,000 a year is gonna be pretty good. It's gonna be much higher than any job that you would be able to get in the private sector. But if you're a data science major and you actually understand these neural networks that everybody call AI, which, is some of the most disruptive technology since smartphones and the internet, you're probably going to want a bigger bag than what Uncle Sam can provide you for that. I mean, what kind of big data expert 
is going to seek to make less money on purpose by working for the feds or what expert in anything is going to choose to make less money that way if there is a parallel position, there's a similar position available for them in the private sector to make more money. And even if there is some altruistic, large language model expert out there who wants one of these jobs so that they can, I guess, work towards the greater good of AI, I seriously doubt that any genuine good is going to come from working under these regulations, you know, working to make these regulations actually come to fruition. You really have to pay attention to how these regulations unfolded to understand what's going on here. Several months ago, representatives of OpenAI, Microsoft, Google, Facebook, and IBM, pretty much all of the big players in the AI field right now, they were asking for the government to put these regulations on them. They said, regulate me harder, daddy. Now, why do you think that is? Like, if you were running a lemonade stand, why would you want Neighborhood Watch or the police to come by and make sure that your lemons aren't too warm and that your sugar is kept in an airtight container and that your ice is cold enough or whatever other regulations a lemonade stand would have to follow? The only reason that you would want anything like that is if your lemonade stand empire is actually able to comply with those regulations or has enough cash on hand in order to pay the fines when they're caught not being compliant. And you see, that's what these regulations like this really end up being about. Raising the barrier to entry so that only big tech who is in bed with big government will be the ones able to build the AI and will be the ones who have access to the unfiltered AI. And on the very, very front page of AI.gov, Biden claims that it is about making AI work for the American people. But the reality is the opposite. Models like ChatGPT and Dolly have already been severely neutered and in their current states, they're less useful to the American people and really to the people of the whole world. And if anybody deserves unfiltered, unregulated access to what these models are capable of doing, it should be the people because we are really the ones who built these AIs or at the very least, we're the ones who created the data that these models were trained on. Everyone who has published any kind of text, any kind of image, audio or video to the internet has likely had that posting, had that data used to train one or more large language models. These regulations are not going to protect Americans' privacy or advance equity and civil rights with AI. This is just the natural step to taking away people's freedoms. And now that they've been sufficiently scared by the media's reporting on deep fakes and chat GPT, a lot of people are going to welcome the restrictions.